Hello friends, this video on organic chemistry basic part 24 is brought to you by examfield.com. No more is needed from exam. Now we talked about intermediates, right? We, do, we talked about intermediate when we told that when a substract or a subtract when nucleophile reacts or electrophile reacts, attacks, so there's an intermediate that is formed for a small duration of time, right? And there are four kinds of inter intermediates we talked carbenes, carbocations, carbonions, and free, uh, free radicals. So the question is, what is carbocation? The first one, right? What is carbocation? And it is earlier called carbonium. Please note, it was earlier called carbonium. So if you see, as the name suggests, cations, that means it has positive charge, correct? So these are the group of carbons which has positive charge and contains six electrons only in the balance. Why is this positive charge? So it should have six electrons in the balance. For example, these are my examples of carbocation: CH3C plus H2 or CH3-2CH. Let me draw the structure of this carbocations. This is CH3. Then I have carbon with a positive charge. This hydrogen, this hydrogen. This is the first one. And the other also I can draw this one carbon with two methyl group and one hydrogen somewhere and one positive charge. These are my two carbocations. The carbon with a positive charge. And this carbon will have six electrons that we see. Two, four and six in the balance cell. Correct. And they, since it has positive charge, it has to be formed by heterolytic cleavage because in homolytic cleavage I told free radicals are formed. Right? So in heterolytic cleavage, one positive and one negative charge is formed. So if you want a positive charge uh, compound, so that it has to be formed from heterolytic cleavage and they are the one which doesn't get an electron, right? The one which gets both the electrons and the negative charge, and these are the one, the poor fellow, which doesn't get any electrons, and they are positive charge, right? And they are generally primary, secondary, and tertiary. There are three kinds of carbocations actually, and depending on whether you have one carbon, two carbon, or three carbon attached to it, we'll we'll take that primary, secondary, and tertiary uh, in, in 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 some time where. This is my example. This is my primary. In this carbon, I have one carbon attached. This is my primary. In this carbon, I have two carbon attached. R remains some alkyl group. This is my secondary. And this carbon, three alkyl group attached. This is my tertiary. Correct? Primary, secondary, and tertiary. And if you talk about the stability, my tertiary carbocations are more stable. And we'll talk about this when we talk about the inductive effect also because this guy, you see this, uh, this alkyl group will try to uh, give some electrons to it and this will, uh, the positive charge will be, will be a little bit nullified. We will talk about this when we talk about the inductive effect. For now, just understand this alkyl groups, they stabilize the carbocations. The more the uh, ca carbon attached to a positive carbon, a carbocation, the greater is the stability. So this guy is most reactive actually. And we have seen this also when we talked about the uh, electrophile, is a very strong electrophile, right? So this is most reactive and uh, this is most stable. This is most stable. This is most stable and least reactive, correct? Carbocations are generally very unstable as I told this and this occurs only for a fraction of seconds and they are very, very unstable and they are very reactive speed generally, right? So, but when you see this is the most reactive, this is least reactive in the carbon. You see the, want to see the structure of this? This is my carbon here, sp2, sp2 hybridized, three carbons are linked to this sp, sp2, all this sp2 orbitals, three hydrogens and this p orbitals, if you see is an empty p orbital, there is an empty p orbital in this and it has a positive charge. We'll talk more about this when we talk about the structures of carbocations. So, if you see the shape of carbocations, as I told, so carbocations are sp2 hybridized. So, if you see this is my carbon here, we we'll draw a big circle. This is my carbon. We we'll name it carbon. This is my carbon. Sp2 hybridized. This is my sp2 orbital. This is my sp2 orbital, and this is my sp2. So if you have any difficulty understanding the orbitals, please watch my atom video where we have discussed about the different kind of orbitals. 
this is all these are an sp2 orbital and this is my empty p orbital so if you see it has a positive charge and the p orbital is empty correct the p orbital is empty and this is the structure of carbocation it is a trigonal planar if you see this is trigonal planar this is a trigonal planar of the structure of the carbocation please note carbocations are trigonal planar and sp2 hybridized correct the next intermediate i told is a carboanion so as the name to this carboanion means negative charged carbon as I told, they are the negative charge carbon species. They are called carboanions. Similar to carbocation, negative charge, carboanion. And they are also very unstable and they are very reactive species. Alkyl groups make the carboanion more stable in this case. So if you see here, last time we saw that if I have a tertiary carbon, carbocation, this was stable. But in this case, this is all the more unstable because with the inductive effect, we'll see this alkyl group will make this carbon all the more negative and become unstable. We'll talk about stability and, and, and uh, unstability of a carbon and there we'll say that if they are a lot of negative or positive charges is localized over a particular atom, right? In this case, for example, this carbon becomes all the more negative. That means this is unstable. And if this negative charge is a little bit spread, this will become stable. So localization of charge on a particular atom makes the whole compound unstable. So if you see, this is very, very unstable, very unstable. And if you talk about this guy, this is stable, right? This is stable, this is stable, and this is very, very unstable. This is stable. And then the next will be this guy. And the next will be this guy. Correct. This is the order actually. Why? Because with the inductive effect, we'll be study the inductive, inductive effect where this alkyl group makes this carbon all the more negative. And since this is a negative charge, it is also formed by heterolytic bond cleavage. And here, this is the lucky group which creates both the electron. Correct. Let's talk about the shape of carbonine. Carbonine is sp3. Please note carbocation was sp2, but this guy is sp3. So if you see the shape, this is sp3 hybridized orbitals. So these are all my sp3, all sp3. Correct. And since this sp3 this is tetrahedron, and if you see this particular sp3 orbital has two electrons, and other sp3 orbitals are combined with hydrogen correct so if you see or or alkyl group it can be r it can be h right so you see the three spd sp3 hybridized uh, hybrid orbitals are combined or are bonded with alkyl group or hydrogen and the one sp3 hybrid orbital is free it has two electrons or one electron pair the next intermediate i told is the free radical so let's understand free radical so these are the atoms or group of atoms which has only one unpaired electron. Please note only one unpaired electron. In fact, electron is a better word. Only one unpaired electron. Correct. And since, as I told, it does not have any charge, it is formed by homolytic fusion. See, if you see, I have a Cl2, right? I have a chlorine, as I explained. So this breaks, this bond breaks, right? I make half of a break. And you get chlorine with one and this also chlorine with one electron. This is the example of free radical. You see the structure of free radical, this is also sp2 hybridase. So if you see here, this is my sp2 orbital, this is my sp2 orbital, this is my sp2 orbital, and this is my p orbital, correct? This is my carbon. So here, three of the sp2 orbitals are linked to hydrogen or alkyl group, and the one p orbital is having one electron. The shape is plain. Why? Because it is sp2 hybridized. Correct. Similar to carbocation. Let's talk about the fourth intermediate is carbene. So carbon is, is neutral actually and it, it shows sp and sp2 hybridization both. Let's, let's see what is carbon. So carbon is nothing but group of atoms which contains a carbon atoms with only six electrons in valence cell, out of which two are unshared. If you see in this case, one, 
टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स दे आर सिक्स इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन द ऑटोम शेल आउट ऑफ दिस टू आर अनशेयर एंड दिस इज कॉल्ड कार्बन प्लीज नॉट कार्बन है कार्बिन हैज सिक्स इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन द बैलेंस शेल आउट ऑफ विच टू आर अनशेयर करेक्ट एंड दे आर न्यूट्रल स्पीसीज बट सिंस दे हैव डेफिशियट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स दे आर इलेक्ट्रोफाइल एक्चुअली इन देयर नेचर करेक्ट सो दे आर अनस्टेबल बिकॉज दे हैव इलेक्ट्रॉन डिफिन कार्बन कार्बन टू मेक इट ऑप्टेड इट शुड हैव एट इलेक्ट्रॉन बट इट हैज ओनली सिक्स इलेक्ट्रॉन्स न्यूट्रल इट इज अनस्टेबल एंड रियक्ट करेक्ट एज आई टोल्ड सिंस दे आर इलेक्ट्रॉन डिफिशियन दे आर इलेक्ट्रोफाइल and there are two different states singlet and triplet singlet is most triplet singlet singlet is sp2 hybridized so if you see this is my carbon here all are my carbon actually so in this carbon if you see as i told it can have it should have four six electrons out of which two are unpaired unshared so if you see this two can be this guy or it can be this two guys or it can be this two right so in this case if you see this guy is sp2 this is my sp2 this is my sp2 orbital and this is my sp2 orbital and this is my p orbital so here p orbital is empty and all these sp2 orbitals have two electrons actually this this guy has just two electrons and these two uh, p orbitals sp2 orbitals are combined with hydrogen correct this is called singlet and then we have something called triplet so in this triplet if you see this guy is also sp2 so this guy is sp2 this guy is sp2 this guy is sp2 so here if you see both the electrons were with sp2 right so you should have both the electrons with this sp2 orbital if one electron is with sp2 orbital and one with p orbital it is triplet so if you see here so you should have having two electrons in this sp2 orbital one electron is in this sp2 orbital one electron is in p orbital and this is triplet this is still sp2 right and then we have some sp hybrid uh, orbital also if you see here this is sp hybrid this is sp hybrid and this is p and this is p orbital so in this case two sp hybrid orbital are merged with or are bonded with hydrogen and the other p orbital if you see they have one electron each right and this is my unstable singlet is more unstable please remember the structure of carbene so this is the structure of carbene where you have one carbon with six valence electron out of which two are totally unshared so in all these we see there are various combination we can form this so two you can form sp2 only in first case uh, both the electrons will be in this sp2 orbital in the second case one in this sp2 and one in the pre empty orbital and the third you can form sp hybrid orbital also where we can say that both the sp orbitals are bonded with hydrogen and the other p orbitals are in having one electron each correct now the question is why they are called singlet or triplet they are called singlet or triplet based on their electron electronic spin and if you see this triplets are paramagnetic these are my paramagnetic you see in this case both those electronic spins are in the same orbital actually right sp2 orbitals here if you see these are in different orbital here also if you see these are in different orbitals here this is in one p another p here this is in sp2 and p here we see both the electrons are in one particular orbital only that is sp2 orbital so based on that they are called triplet or singlet thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again